Hey guys, Paul ISM. Welcome to another video build. Today we're going to be starting Ravel's 125th Ford Torino GT. So this is a kit I bought last year. Um, I've got a thing for these fastback American cars. I don't know what it is. I just love the look of them. They're ugly, but cool. I know I'm probably going to offend a few people saying that, but they are. Um, so I've had in the stash for a while. I've been dying to build it. Just out of nowhere, I thought, you know what? I'm going to build it. I pick my color, and here we go. That's what we're going to do today. So don't forget, you can get access to all these videos by becoming a patron. There's a link in the description down below. Loads of other perks coming to Patreon. Early access, exclusive Saturday bench updates, and exclusive Facebook messenger chat group. There's loads of us in there. Uh, and you also help keeping these videos going by becoming a supporter. Links down below. Everything else associated with the channel is linked down there as well. Um, and here we go. We're going to jump straight into the build. We're going to have a quick look through the box and then crack on and get started. Okay, so on another build, the Revel Ford Torino. So nice clean body on this, nice and straight. No damage, no flash. No mar or burn into the plastic, which is always good to see. Nice clear parts, well packaged as well. No flash on the kit, evident anywhere. Really nice and clean. Nice detail on the door cards. Everything perfectly mounted. Uh, we've got some custom exhaust there as well. There's a roll cage in the interior. Like I say, the molding's all nice and crisp. Even the chrome is pretty decent on the kit. Uh, we will be stripping this, repainting it ourselves though. Uh, nice interior parts, the nice bit of under chassis detail as well and just overall a nice quality replica i think this stems from about 2000 2010 i think it was so it's a relatively new kit we've got clear parts tires there's another set of tires in there as well some wider ones uh, but overall it looks a nice clean kit decent instructions photo etch which is almost unheard of in revel kits but there's some photo etch in there as well uh we've got a good Decal sheet, uh, some are pretty uh, horrendous decals, but the others uh, look really good. And typical Revel instructions, fairly clear. And assembly looks pretty straightforward. Uh, you get the option of stock and drag. So there's a roll cage in there. You get different wheels and tires for the back. Um, so yeah, we're not going to go the full drag route. Uh, we are going to put the wider tires on the back. Um, a few different parts on the engine as well. We're not going to put the roll cage in. We'll keep the interior as is. But yeah, like I say, some PE, some photo edge with the kit. So the first step, as always, I'm going through the instructions, marking off all everything that is going to be body color. And that way we know what to prepare. I'm just test fitting the photo etch. And yeah, it fits absolutely perfect on both sides. So yeah, a nice bit of trim along the bottom here. And then it's on to part cleanup. So... Pretty standard parts, cleaning up, get all the locating points off, clean up with a variety of ultimate sanders until everything is nice and clean, and then we'll scuff it all up in preparation for uh, primer. We're going to do some light rescribing on the body as well, so we'll get to that in a minute, but just test fitting the bonnet fit at the minute. It was a little bit tight, so I'm just taking a gentle bit off the edge and a quick test fit. Yeah, quite a nice fitting bonnet, this one, or a hood, depending on the world of world you're from. Yeah, it fits really well, no issues there. And then I'm just going to go around the body and clean it up. So there's a few whips, wisps of flash here and there. So we're just going to go around with a 220 UMP sponge. We're going to take care of all the seam lines as well while we're here. But overall, nice clean bodywork on this. It's a good looking car, this one. I really love these fastback shape US cars. Um, and like I say, nice clean body, minimal cleanup required. Uh, we're just going to go around, standard, get rid of any flash, any seam lines, clean it all up, and get it prepped. Now, we do have a front and rear section we're going to keep separate. One is like the insert for the grill and headlights on the front, and that rear volance for the back as well. Probably could have glued the rear volance in, but I thought we'll make life easier, leave it off. It glues in place pretty neat. Uh, a quick test fit shows that... The fit's not bad, but as you can see, we do have some gaps down the side. So a little bit of light sanding will fix that. So we just get the UMP sponge on it and just take it away a bit at a time and get the thinning stick on there to chamfer the edges a bit, to angle them a bit more. So 
just test fit. Take it off, sand a bit, pop it back in uh, until you get as good a fit as you can get. And like I say, we'll see it glue this in place later and it does actually fit really, really well. So there we go. With a little bit of sanding, the majority of that gap is now gone. It is a natural panel line on the car, so we're all good. Same on the front piece as well. This is the headlight from grill holder um, and pretty clean. Fits really well. Not too bad at all. So overall, this kit, obviously, it's finished now. Uh, there's a couple of niggles with it. Um, the glass isn't the best. The locating points for the glass aren't as prominent as they should be. I did have a few issues there with that. Um, other than that, the PU is a bit tricky to put in place, especially if you're not used to photo etch. You may find it a bit daunting to do. Um, but a little bit of PVA-based glue, and it went on fine. And like I say, these panels fit in really well. And then we go over it with our Holly Point Seal Scriber. Give everything a light rescribe just to clear out the panel lines, deepen them a little bit. They are quite prominent on the kit, but I think they always benefit from a very quick rescribe. Uh, these Holly Scribers, in my opinion, are some of the easiest to use. Um, I think because your finger control is so near the actual cutting surface that you don't tend to slip as much. I don't have much use with the ones on handles. They tend to slip and cause more damage than good. Whereas this one, I've had a lot of luck with these. But I think, sadly, they are a production. Uh, and you can still get a few remnants of them from the Far East. So if you're after a good rescriber, I highly recommend these. They are very, very good. Does the job brilliantly. Like I say, we're not trying to cut through the body. We're just lightly rescribing. There's not a lot of pressure going on there. Just scribing so we get a nice uniform shape. And you may find on the Revel kits and some of the cheaper kits that where the panel lines go over different surfaces or undulating uh, recesses, that the panel line doesn't continue as well. So this is your opportunity here to deepen or widen them a touch more. Uh, we've also got the wing mirrors as well. Pretty nasty seam on the wing mirrors. So again, quick run over the UMP sponge. Takes care of those. As always, preparation is key with this. The better job you do now, the better the finish you'll have at the end. And this one's got a pretty nice paint job at the end of this one. Quite proud of this one when we're done. So all the parts cleaned up, we're going to key the surface of the body of the car. So this is a 2000 grit Tamiya sanding sponge. Uh, I'm just going to go over all the body and flat back all the plastic. Now, this is two things. It gets rid of any imperfections or glue marks or anything that may go on the body. Uh, and it will also pour thousands of micro abrasions in the surface of the plastic, uh, which will help with primer uh, adhesion. Um, because there is more surface area to grab, you have less issues with paint adhesion. But they have a lot of issues. If you're using a lacquer based primer, you should be pretty good. Um, but doing all these stages, again, it's just key to, you know, it's the steps used by real body shops to get good results on real cars. So. Why not carry it down to our car models? Does it need doing? Maybe not. Uh, does it make a difference? I think it does. And like I say, we're not trying to reprofile anything. We're not trying to sand through. We're just literally keying that surface. And you can tell the difference because it'll go from shiny plastic to dull. And that's exactly what we want. Another important step is mounting the car uh, ready for paint. So I used the Tamiya stand. I think for the money, it's unbeatable. I've had this for 10 years. You can see the amount of paint that's accumulated on it. They're not that expensive to buy. It's a very good investment. And with some Tamiya tape, it's very securely mounted. It spins. You can hold it upside down. If you glue the sections together, because that top and bottom section uh, do come apart. And I've had a few near misses where it's dropped on me. So mine is glued together. Um, and then mounting these parts. So the rear volante was CA glued in place, I think. Uh, I put some glue on a cocktail stick and just put it on the plastic. On this front piece, I've drilled a hole in an area that can't be seen behind. And we get a cocktail stick with a point, preferably. And just gently insert it into the hole. Mm, oh, we'll get it in there eventually. Maybe try a bit of spit. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, well, we'll leave it in. Never mind. Anyway, there we go. Mounted securely for primer. And then on the bonnet, we've got a 3M sticky pad on a tongue depressor. And again... The last important step before priming, degreasing the body. So this is ProScale Paints pre-paint degreaser. I would highly I didn't drink that then at all. Um, honestly, it was just an early morning yeah, drink. Anyway, uh, ProScale pre-paint degreaser. I highly recommend this. It is perfect for our paints. It's an alcohol-based degreaser, specially formulated, and that will remove any fingerprints, 
biscuit crumbs, cake crumbs, you know, uh, Cheeto marks, sausage roll fingerprints, anything and everything you might have put on that body inadvertently while you've been handling it. And we're all guilty. Human fingerprints are some of the worst uh, culprits for leaving greasy fingerprints behind, yada, yada, yada. And this is the last stage in the preparation in paint. So it is alcohol-based. It will evaporate. I like to soak a bit of tissue with it, wipe it all over, and then use a bright, dry bit of tissue to dry it all off. And then as long as you don't touch that again, you have got a perfectly prepared surface ready for paint. So it's a step well worth taking. And again, as I always say, preparation is key. Um, doing these steps will give you a much better paint job, and I think my paint jobs speak for themselves. So we're in the booth. We've got Pro Scale Great Microfiller Primer. We have got my Iwata Revolution CR3. This is a 0.3 airbrush. We're about 18 psi. We've dusted over the model for anti-static brush, blown it over with some air, and we're going to put three light coats of primer on there, building it up slowly. We're using nice slow passes going on and off the air at the end of each pass. We're not putting the primer on wet. It's just going on in a nice mist coat. I'm going to work our way around the entire body. Thought I spotted something. Let's have a look. No, I didn't. Um, we're going to work our way around the entire body until we've got a nice even coat of primer. We'll pop it to one side while we paint the bonnet, the phalanx, mirrors, etc. And by the time we've done those, we'll be ready for our second coat of primer. So be aware, I've got my spray booth on. I've got a nice clean uh, work area in the spray booth. So we're minimizing dust and any crap that can land in the paint. I've also got a respirator on and a glove on my left hand where any paint will go on the glove and not my hand. So safety precautions, always important to take with any paints. Um, as long as you've got a good extractor, no one's in the room with you. Make sure no pets or animals in the room with you. You're pretty much fine using near enough any paint. We're getting in the engine bay as well, because that'll be painted up too. And like I say, get all those recesses around the front, all the wheel arches, get in and around the windows as well. And we're not hosing the paint on. I've sped this up a little bit for the second coat. Yeah, we're not hosing it on. We're just getting enough paint down to cover it evenly. And then, like I say, we'll pick up all the other parts while this dries and flashes off and paint those separately. So I thought I'd leave this in. Quite often I'll get rid of this footage, but I think sometimes it can be important to see what's going on. Uh, like I say, with the smaller parts, just be careful because they do cover a lot quicker. Um, with the bonnets, I get the edges and the top, and usually a little bit underneath as well because that will be painted black later on. And with these parts, just be careful you don't knock them off. And like I say, just be careful on small parts. It's very easy to overspray them. But on parts like this, headlights around, make sure you get all those angles and all those little recesses. Right then, so this is our third coat of primer. Uh, we've let it flash off for five minutes between each coat. As you can see, we've alternated left and right, up and down passes. Uh, that way we get nice, even paint distribution on all the panel lines and all the recesses. As you can see, as we get to the last coat, I'll start putting the paint on a little bit wetter. Not a full wet coat. It does not need a wet coat at all. Uh, but because we've got the protection of the first coat of paint, we know we're not going to get any uh, problems spraying it with too thick a coat where you'll get runs or the paint will separate or any issues you can get while painting. Like I say, just take your time. This is a skill that's learned over time, painting, especially airbrushing. So just take your time. And like I say, let it flash off five minutes between each coat. And jobs are good. Now, as I always say, this is a microfiller primer, so it is going to drive a little bit of texture. So you are going to have to sand it back, which will be our next step. Uh, and once you've sanded it back with, say, a Tamiya 3000 sponge, which is my preferred choice, uh, you'll have a super smooth prime surface. And then, again, that is the preparation on the way for our beautiful blue paint job. So let the paint dry, the primer dry, for about six hours. Um, yeah, it's 5 p.m. at night, by the look of my watch there. So, yeah, that's been dry for about six hours. We've got a 3,000 grit Tamiya sponge, and we're just running it all over the body really lightly. We're not trying to sand through everything. We're just trying to take the very top surface of the primer off, uh, and it should go from feeling rough to being super smooth, and I mean super smooth, and that's the idea of our primer. With it being slightly thicker, um, it infills all the micro abrasions on the body, 
and leaves you with a super smooth prime surface. So the Tamiya 3000 sponges, ideal job for this. Once we're done, we're going to clean piece of kitchen paper and just very gently wipe it over. Don't use any aggression at all here. Aggression? You don't need to be aggressive using it. You just want to run it over and get all the dust off. And obviously repeat all these steps on all the other parts as well. Be very careful of the edge of the paints, any raised uh, areas as well, where the paint is always inherently thinner because you'll just burn through it. And we don't want to burn through the primer. It's not what we're doing here. We're just flattening back the surface to give us a super smooth primer coat. So again, there we go. We'll leave that for a couple more hours, and then we'll come back for some paint. So for this one, we've got ProScale Paints Ford Grabber Blue. Now, this is the color I had in mind for this car the day I bought it, and it's been on my shelf waiting for this day ever since. Um, I bought this kit a while back, and I've been absolutely dying to build it. So the paints were well shaken. Our paints are pre-thinned for use, but you do need to shake them really well. Use a badge of paint mixer in there, a vortex mixer, whatever you've got, or good old elbow grease to shake the living bejesus out of it. And as I say, I've had this paint on my shelf for quite some time. It's one of our older caps. So the day of reckoning is finally here. Um, grab a blue is a great color. So we're going to dust off the model with our Tamiya anti-static brush to try and minimize any dust that'll land in it. It's a great tool, the Tamiya brush. And then we're going to blow over it quickly with some air from the airbrush. Make sure we've got paint coming through, which we have. Quick blow over some air. But our Iwata Revolution CR3, again, 0.3 mil needle, 18 PSI. Uh, we're just going to put down probably six or seven coats of paint. Nice, light, thin coats. You do not put this paint down wet at all. Uh, none of the automotive paints should go down wet. Not the idea how they're used. And you can see the coverage already just off one coat. It's a beautiful colour, this, and it looks absolutely stunning at the end. So just getting all those nooks and crannies, getting all that engine bay as well. I am going to paint it all blue. We are going to mask and paint it black later, but I'd rather get a nice uniform colour down everywhere. Get the tops of those windows as well. Oh, let's have a look at the brush. Yeah, it looks good. Spray myself in the face. I, have, I do actually have a bent needle on this brush, ever so slightly bent, and it is collecting paint on the nib every now and then, and it will, if I'm not careful, spit on the body. Uh, the problem is I'm kind of refusing to buy a new needle because they're not cheap for the eye waters. Uh, um, so I'm going to have a go to straighten it out, so I'll report back on that one. I've done it before, and it's worked well. Um, but yeah, it does collect a little bit of paint on the nozzle this side, and that's what I was just looking at to make sure it's not blocked. So, obviously, we're getting all the wheel arches, all the lower sills, all the front end as well. Getting all those wheel arches. Like I say, nice light thin coat. You're, you're much better with multiple light coats than heavy ones. Uh, it will cover better. You'll have better depth of coverage. You can see how well our paint covers. Uh, one thing we've always said at ProScale is we will not over-thin our paints for profit. Um... They are absolutely perfectly mixed. Just checking the end of it again. A bit paranoid, you see. So it's something I definitely need to rectify. Um, so, yeah, either a new needle or I'll have to try and fix it. Um, sadly, when you're doing um, maintenance on your airbrushes, they do get damaged. I'll be honest, I've never, ever bought a replacement needle or nozzle for an eye water that I can remember. Whereas I own Harder and Steambex, I must have bought a dozen needles and nozzles because I kept breaking them. Uh, the eye waters just seem a lot more resilient to damage. And that's why I'm kind of refusing to buy one because I reckon I can fix this. So stay tuned. I'll report back in the next build. Um, yes. And again, same on the smaller parts. Nice light thin codes building up. As you can see, I'm going on and off the air after every pass. That way we do get the accumulation of paint. Uh, when we go on the air before we go back on the model, it will spit that paint off off the model and not on it. And there we go. Just make sure we get the sides and just very lightly underneath as well. Like I said, we're going to paint this black later, so it doesn't really matter. But we just want a nice uniform coat of paint. So it's just a case of being, you know, patient, working it around. Like I said, this is about seven coats of paint on this. Uh, very light coats. I don't even use half a bottle of paint. Our paint goes a long way because, as I say, it's not over thinned, so the coverage is really good. 
and of course the mirrors. And again, just be careful on the small parts. You don't over spray them. It's easily done. We're leaving five minutes between flash off for every coat. And here we are after set. I would say this is about seven coats of paint. And you see we've got a lovely deep blue color. It's, it's painted absolutely perfectly. You can see these last coats of paint have brought the airbrush back a little bit further. So we're getting a bit more of a mist. And yeah, paint's absolutely beautiful. It's a wonderful colour, this. Definitely one of my favourite colours on the Fords. I do like the Grabber colours. If I remember right, we used the Grabber orange on the last Mustang we did. And that was a great looking colour too. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. So just take your time. Patience is another thing here. Um, why are you in a rush? This is a hobby. It should be an enjoyable hobby, even for myself, where I'm literally painting as a living, and time is money for me. The quicker I get these builds out, the more content I get, yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, this is still my hobby as well. While it is my moneymaker as such, um, this is still my hobby, so I still want to enjoy it. So some things, yes, I am guilty of rushing. I always enjoy painting. I always have. So for me, this is one of the most enjoyable steps, this. Uh, so just take your time. The better the job you do, the better the end result you'll have. So patience is key, and just get everything painted up nicely. All that preparation we did beforehand is paying off here, because as you see, we've got a super smooth surface, no imperfections, we've got no dust, there's no runs of paint, there's no seam lines, nothing. All that preparation we did beforehand has paid off here, because we have beautiful paintwork. And this is one of the hardest parts of car modelling, is the paintwork. Um, you can have the most beautifully detailed engine, the most fantastically detailed interior, your paint job will let it down. So this is one of those areas where I would always try to improve if you can. Just take your time, slow yourself down a little bit, follow the preparation uh, regime I've done here, and hopefully it'll help improve your modeling. I really do. That is the reason I make these videos, is to help people improve their modeling, and hopefully some people take on board what I'm saying. There we go. It is 10 o'clock at night. Uh, I love being able to see my watch because I can see what time it is. Uh, 10 o'clock at night, we've got some masking to do. So we're going to go around all the silver trim with uh, Azu uh, 1 and 2.5 mil tape. Uh, mask everything off and then spray it silver. Now, there's people out there going to say use bare metal foil. I invested a lot of money in bare metal foil. I've got about six or seven packs of it there that are absolutely useless because they just will not stick. And yeah, I understand people saying that it's improved, but I've got a lot of money's worth. Burn metal foil in the UK is not cheap. So I've already kind of been burnt there with burn metal foil. It used to be absolutely brilliant. Uh, now it is terrible, or the ones I have are terrible. Um, there's other people who are in the camp of using a Sharpie or a marker pen. It just doesn't look right for me. So I'd rather spend an hour or so very carefully masking it all up to spray it because in my opinion it looks better it's boring it's laborious um but again are you are you in a rush why are you in a rush this is a model we're trying to make a bit of automotive art here if you want to call it that so just take your time as you see we're already half an hour in um for this one we've also got these little grills to mask off on the side so i've masked off the exterior with the two and a half mil uh, azu and i'm using some 0.4 azu it goes right down to 0.4 azu tape to mask off in between the fins you can see we've done all the wheel arches as well so in my opinion this is time well spent uh we can then infill the rest of all the body as you can see here it is more masking tape than uh torino anymore and then we've got some pro scale paint super fine silver so i developed this paint um, and it's absolutely beautiful for a wheel color and a window trim color it is very finely pigmented it's nice and bright and it's probably the best stainless steel substitute paint you're going to get that doesn't require clear coat like our chrome system we are going to use our chrome system on the wheels and the bumpers but for the window trims i prefer the look of like this super fine silver i think it looks a bit more realistic on the windows we can clear coat over this we won't lose any shine whatsoever so for me, yeah, this is the way to do it. A couple of I coats of this. This is through my other iWater Revolution CR3. I have separate ones for paint and metallics. 
Uh, but just building her up nice and slow, get all the marker lights, the wheel arches, the grills, the windows, just like coats everywhere, just building it up slowly until we've got the full pigmentation of the metallic paint. And there we go, it's looking good. And obviously there's one on the bonnet as well, don't forget that. You can see just how beautifully pigmented that metallic colour is. Unmasked, you can see there the windows look absolutely fantastic. So very, very happy with this. We've got some decals to put on. Now, I was on the fence with using these decals because I thought, hmm, I don't know if I like them. Once they were on, I was like, wow, they look epic. So, yeah, we went with the blue on blue. And I think it really just looks great as a scheme together. So very happy I chose these. The decals are really good quality. There's multiple colours in the, the uh, decal sheet for different colour schemes on the car. Standard decal procedure, get it in place, get the moisture out from behind it, hitting it with some ultimate strong decal solution, which is the best decal solution on the market you can get, in my opinion. So we've got our water there, we've got our decals in place, the setting solution, and we'll give it a little bit of heat to get it in as well. So get everything lined up where you want it. Don't be afraid to move the decals around. You've just got to be careful. These Revel decals are genu genu ge generally is the word. There we go. Not genuinely. Generally, really good quality. So um, no real qualms in putting these down. I think the blue on blue, I think, just looks epic. I really do love the color of this decal. So, yeah. I was a bit on the fence about putting it on. Once I did, I was like, yep, that really suits that. So in place we go. So just carefully line it up where you want it. Then once you're happy, get all the moisture off behind it. Hit it with your decal solutions of choice. If you've not tried the ultimate decal solution, I would highly recommend it. Uh, four strengths. We've got a normal, strong, and an extra strong. And yeah, they set decals absolutely beautifully. There is a separate video on the channel showing how to use them. And there we go. Just get it all in place, getting any moisture off behind, get the decal solution on place to soften it. There we go, just work the decal slowly. And then a little bit of gentle heat from our heat gun. Again, another worthy investment in the tool arsenal. These heat guns are absolutely fantastic. Just don't hold it in place too long, and I always put my thumb nearby so i know when things are getting a little too hot and then final go over with a cotton bud just to remove any moisture make sure everything's burnished down getting the excess decal solution off and then we're going to cut the panel lines with a fresh bladed scalpel nice and carefully and then load up some strong uh, extra strong decal solution now on the panel lines, brush it in, and then just lightly dab at it with the brush to push those panel lines in. And you can see that's a little bit of work and some gentle pushing. These water brush pens I use are very, very gentle brushes. Absolutely ideal. You can get these from any art store. They are called water pens. The idea is you fill them full of water, and they're there for mixing watercolor paints, but we don't use it like that. Wash time, we're going some Tamiya enamel based panel line wash. We're going to mix grey and black to give us a nice dark grey colour. So a bit of grey and flair first, a bit of grey in first. Um, and then add black until you get the colour you require. So we're just going to go for a nice dark grey. We don't want a light grey, we don't want a black, we want in between just a nice dark grey colour. So just mix it by eye until you're happy. A little bit more. These enamel washes are great, especially on the lacquer paints because they don't react with the paint. And then it's a case of touching it, let the capillary action carry it. And uh, literally, if it holds a wash, give it a wash. That is my philosophy. Work your way around the entire body. Thankfully, not a lot of panel lines on this, so it didn't take too long to do it all. You see how quick the uh, wicking action of the capillary action takes it. it. Takes about half an hour to dry. It's enamel base, but it does dry pretty quick. And then we can get some cotton buds with some Sansador odorless mineral spirits on. 
to wipe off the excess uh, and then get a clean piece of tissue to wipe off um, what's left behind. I did put a little bit of wash in these uh, vents as well. So it's going to very gently. Now, please remember, although the enamel won't react with the lacquer, if you rub too hard with that kitchen paper, it's abrasive. It will take the paint off. So just be careful here. Take your time. Work your way around until the wash is gone. It's an important stage. I think it adds depth to the car. It accentuates all the panel lines and like the wheel arches. So I think it is a very, very important step to do. And uh, there we go. That's it. We're going to leave that there today. Put our final bit of wash on our bonnet. And we'll be back in part two very soon. Thank you very much for watching today. And a huge thanks to all my patrons whose names are going to flash up on screen right now. Take care. Bye-bye.